In this video, you will learn the five steps to becoming the number one priority in your man's life. So if you're dating a man who has changed and no longer shows you the love he once did or no longer makes you feel like the most important person in his life, then this is the video for you. Don't go anywhere because we're starting right now. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Antonio Borello and I'm a psychologist and a relationship coach. This channel is all about helping you build great relationships so you can grow happy with the people you love. So if you're interested in making your love life the best part of your life, start now by clicking the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you aren't missing anything. Okay, how to become his number one priority. If you've ever fallen in love, you know the feelings are simply incredible. It's like the best feeling in the world and you never want it to end. And in fairy tales, passionate love never ends. It lasts forever. But in real life, when you've been in a relationship for a while, things change. Ideally, the intense feelings of happiness and attraction and longing, well, they morph into a deeper and more meaningful connection. And then a true partnership is formed and it's all good. But in other cases, things take an unsettling change. He isn't making you a priority. He doesn't seem to consider your feelings first. He's not as affectionate as he was before. He's not texting and calling as much. And you feel like he is not making you or the relationship a priority and he's taking you for granted. And this is a scary position to be in. You feel insecure and worry that he might be slipping away. So it's natural to want to do something to fix the problem and make things go back to the way they were before. And that's exactly what I'm going to share with you in this video. So without further ado, here's number one. Number one, forget about what you feel and remember what you deserve. When you're in love with a man who isn't making you or the relationship a priority, it's a very scary position to be in. You are fearing that he's slipping away and may not love you like he once did. And this fear is your worst enemy. Why? Well, it makes you engage in behaviors that are less than self-serving. And when you are fearful that you are losing him, you grasp onto him more strongly. And often you end up begging for his attention and grasping onto the scraps and breadcrumbs that he throws your way. Meanwhile, he's living his life, doing his thing, and he's not concerned about you. He's not worried about what you are doing because every time he communicates with you, you are complaining of not getting enough of his time or attention. So he feels secure. And because of your insecure feeling, your value in his eyes goes down and you are becoming an afterthought. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to notice what you are feeling. Notice the disappointment, the sadness, and the fear that you're feeling. It's disheartening, I know, but it doesn't have to control what you do. So I want you to recognize the fear and disappointment and use it to motivate you to change your behaviors. Think about what things used to be like and then make yourself a promise that you will accept no less than what you deserve by adapting these changes into your life. These tips are all rooted in being the best version of yourself and loving yourself. They are about respecting yourself and your life and they are designed to help him recognize your value and to remember the person he fell in love with. And yes, they do work. So after you've made that conscious shift in your thinking, go on to the second step. Number two, prioritize you and your social life. In this case, you need to take the attention off of him and put it back onto yourself. Be yourself and make yourself a priority and demonstrate that you are a high value woman. Cultivate your own rich life, one that he would be fortunate to be part of. So resurrect your social life outside of his, go out with your friends and have fun again, away from your man. Do something for you, take up a new hobby or do something that you enjoy. And this forces him to recognize your independence and that you're not just sitting by the phone waiting for his calls. Make sure that you are keeping up with the life you had prior to meeting him. Make and keep plans with your girlfriends and keep your schedule busy. Make plans to do things for you each and every week and grow and enrich your relationships with your friends and family. And continue to engage in the practice of self-love. And when you do, you become a woman who exudes inner confidence and high self-esteem. You become a woman that knows that she has choices when it comes to men. Instead of acting from a place of fear, control, and scarcity, and treating him as if he were your last chance at love, let him win your affection and your love. 
Remember, he's got to know how full and complete your life is. And if he becomes part of it, it's because you want him to be part of it, not because you need him to be part of it. And believe me, when you prioritize your life, he's going to take notice and your value in his eyes will go up as will the challenge. So he will be wanting you more than ever. Number three, stop seeking reassurance. It's normal to want to know how your significant other feels about you. But constantly asking them is not the way to go about it. Do you love me? How much do you love me? Are you sure? You can't look for his words to assure you of your value. And when you do, it becomes overbearing for him and will likely lead to the demise of your relationship. But most of all, it shows him that you are insecure and that lowers your value in his eyes and becomes a huge disadvantage. It shows him that you are afraid of losing him and that you are no longer the prize. You are no longer the challenge. Again, you just lowered your value. Remember, looking to our partner to reassure us when we feel insecure only leads to more insecurities. These attitudes come from inside of us, and unless we can overcome them within ourselves, it won't matter how smart or sexy or worthy or attractive he says you are. No matter what, we must strive to feel okay within ourselves. And that takes us back to the importance of self-love and being a high-value woman. Number four, allow him to pursue you. That means that you have to stop pursuing him. That means that you have to stop texting him between dates. That means that you cannot be initiating communications with him. Instead, you must let him do it. Look, I know that this one is a difficult one to do because you like him, you miss him, and you want to talk to him. It's hard not to reach out because you want to be connected and communicating. But if you want a man to really prioritize you, you must pull away and allow him to miss you. Allow him to pursue you. He's a man and he needs to do that. So do not initiate calls or texts to him. Notice I didn't say ignore him or stop communicating. I'm saying stop being the one that is always looking for him and starting communications. In other words, you're not the one who's going to be starting the day with a good morning call or text. Instead, let him do it. Eventually, he will recognize the difference and wonder why you've suddenly gone silent on him. Let him feel a little down and realize that he was happier when things were different. Your silence will speak volumes and he will usually start to pursue you again quickly. Oh, and make him wait before you return his calls and texts. I understand the urge to respond back immediately, especially if you've been waiting to hear from him for a while. But taking some time before responding to his contact sends the message that you are busy and not just sitting by your phone waiting for him to reach out. Have patience and take your time before responding. Doing so will certainly increase his yearning for you. Number five, keep your standards and expectations high. Remember, it's your values and your expectations that sets the bar for your relationship. It sets your standards of what you expect. And where you set your own bar determines how anyone else is going to treat you. Because the way we love and value ourselves sets up the way in which we let other people love and value us or mistreat us. The problem that so many people have, when they are fearful that someone is slipping away, they're often willing to compromise their standards and accept anything just to keep the relationship going. And when you do that, you are setting low parameters for him. But when you refuse to entertain or tolerate behaviors or actions of his that you don't agree with or that don't meet your standards, then you are staying true to yourself and keeping your standards high. So if a man isn't meeting your standards, if a man isn't treating you right, if a man isn't meeting your needs, you must be willing to walk away. You cannot lie to yourself or bargain with yourself that although he isn't really what you're looking for, he will change or things will get better. Believe me, they won't. And if anything, they will only get worse. When he knows that you aren't willing to settle, that you aren't going to tolerate behaviors or actions of his that you don't agree with, he's going to step up his game and step up to the challenge. But he will only experience this if he knows that you are willing and able to walk away from something that isn't right for you. And that brings me to the most important point of the video. If you spent some time doing all of these steps and you find that he still isn't prioritizing you or the relationship, then you must walk away with your head held up high. Look, I know it's not easy to accept the fact that a man doesn't want a relationship with you or that a man hasn't made you a priority. It hurts and it hurts a lot. That's because people deeply personalize romantic rejection to the point of attaching their value and self-worth to whether or not another person wants them. 
But when you do that, you give away your power and rely on the validation of a man to tell you that you're good enough. Let me repeat that. When your self-worth and value is attached to whether or not some man wants a relationship with you, you give up all of your power, hoping to get validation from him. So if he doesn't want you, you start to question yourself and ask, what's wrong with me? And that's the opposite of the way that you should be thinking about it. The question you should be asking is, what's wrong with him? Think about it this way. This is a man who hasn't known you very long, and your value and worth has nothing to do with his perception of you. After all, his perception is simply based on his imagination and the limited interactions that he's had with you, both good and bad. So take your power back and trust the process. Regardless of how badly you want him, if he isn't making you or the relationship a priority, you must put your self-respect above your feelings and walk away. Remember, forget what you feel and remember what you deserve. When you shift into what you want instead of whether or not someone wants you, you are practicing self-love and you gain so much freedom and move forward with confidence. But again, it all starts with self-love. Check out this video for more about how self-love changes the way you date or click here to watch a video that YouTube thinks that you'll like. I'll see you in the next video.